Hey gamers, it's Grind This Game here, back with Oxygen Not Included in the final episode of the series, the 100 dupe challenge. Uh, last episode we got to 100 dupes, but uh, we got rid of a few of them last episode to try to reduce the lag a bit. And it did work quite a bit once I reloaded the game. Uh, this episode is going to be about how to open the temporal tear, so there's going to be spoilers, uh, and how to win the game essentially in the, uh, in the DLC. So hopefully it'll go fairly quickly. Um, there is going to be some time to fly the rocket, uh, but we'll see what's going on here. Now there's some criteria that you need to fulfill to finish the game. Uh, like I said, spoilers ahead, so if you don't want to know how to end the game, don't listen. Um, first of all, you need to explore and set up portals on five different asteroids. That includes the, the one you start on. Uh, so we had one on our main planet, and then I put one on this planet, Herbera. I'm talking about the printing pod that you can build, the mini pod. So that's number two, and then on the snow planet we have three. Uh, Grossado, I had number four. Somewhere here, number four. And then on Floodiole, the uh, water planet, I built the fifth one. And then I think it's consistent on every game. The temporal tear thing will show up on the snow biome, the ice biome. Sorry, the ice asteroid, which I'll show you in a sec here once we uh, get some save lag. The game gets pretty slow <laughs> at uh, when you have this many dupes and this much stuff going on here. Let's check out the star map here. This is my starting planet, Gupilus, Gup Gupilius. <laughs> and then uh, the temporal tear is over here. And the snowy eel, the ice planet or asteroid is here. That's where that uh, temporal tear opener showed up. Now, it needs uh, a few things. So like I said, it needs five gates opened. It needs a line of sight up into space. And it's not just a straight line. It needs kind of a cone. So I don't know exactly how many tiles, but I had to open up this area here. Um, you also need to feed it... Uh, uh, I think it's a hundred thousand rad bolts. Let me think here. Maybe it's ten thousand. Uh, hundred thousand. No, I think it's only ten thousand. So you'll probably want to build a nuclear reactor, uh, research reactor, which I did here, in order to build the uh, rad bolts up. I originally had just one rad bolt generator, but then I put in two. And with this radiation here, oops, Come back to our main ice planet here. With the radiation here. We're getting about uh, 240 rad bolts per cycle from that one and then another 200 or so here. So about 400 per cycle. So it takes a while. You can build more obviously if you have the power. I just didn't have much power on this planet because I didn't really build it out much. I was just using petroleum power. So like I said, 10,000 rad bolts uh, and you shoot them into this port here. So we're using uh, collectors and then some reflectors and we're going through floors here. Being careful not to let the dupes walk in front of these because they get zapped. So I filled it up. Uh, we've got, it's fully charged now. It'll show you the charge status as it's charging up with this little line right here, right here. And then finally when it's charged up, uh, it'll give you a little indicator up here. Press the red button to activate. It's actually not a red button. It's just this fire thing, which you see when you click on here. Now, a word of warning. Um, when you do this, something spectacular will happen. So you'll probably want to build bunker doors out of steel, covering your whole base. And then I'm also going to close the doors, which I think is allowed. Let's speed things up here. You just have to have a line of sight to get the fire button. And then once the fire button's available, I think it doesn't matter if you close it back up. We'll find out here in a second. It's a bit of a, I would say a bug. Let's see if it still allows it. Yeah, we still got the fire button. So we're gonna slow things down here and we're gonna fire the sucker. Here we go. Oh, there it goes. Look at that thing. Pretty crazy. Get a close up of it in action here. <laughs> Pretty cool. But then you get the meteor shower. 
which is uh, pretty extensive. I tried it out without the bunker doors and it completely destroyed my colony. As you can imagine, uh, but we're protected with the bunker doors and bunker tiles. My landing pad, I'm going to have to rebuild and these ladders, but uh, we're going to speed it up here because this thing takes a while. This is hot, hot uh, regolith. But, uh, yeah, pretty simple. Pretty significant damage. Quite the shower. Okay, we'll go even faster here. Let it get finished. Just to give you an idea of how long it is. Okay, that's it. Pretty brutal. Uh, okay, so... We're gonna go back to our main planet. Actually, let's check out the star map first. So, star map. Now this thing is open. Temporal tear. Now you can send a, a rocket here, I think. And now in the non-DLC, in the main game, um, you'd send a rocket to the temporal tear at the top of the map. This one's slightly different and you have to open it, so... That's the difference. Uh, we're gonna send a rocket there. I got a rocket prepped here. We're gonna send two... Two, uh... Fearless dupes. We're gonna set it to crew. And we got some oxygen and food on board here. We got lots of food. Probably too much. Let's set this to non-grounded. Crew. And our dupes should be along in a second here. Assuming they're not sleeping. Oh, here we go. Jackson, uh, let's get your suit off. And Amanda, you're hi hidden behind there. There we go. They're ready to go. Let's set our destination. We're going to the temporal tear. Now you'll probably need a nuclear rocket or a um, hydrogen rocket. I'm using nuclear or potentially, I don't know. I've never been able to successfully do it, but a petroleum rocket with two fuel tanks, I think might work. Um, so let's set the destination and fire this puppy off. Fueled. Acknowledge warnings. Yeah, the warning is saying it's a one-way trip, essentially. And we'll set that rocket off. Didn't really need to bring the trailblazer modules, but we'll bring them anyway. Come on, rocket. Acknowledge warnings. Oh, okay, I didn't click the button. Requested... Here we go. The final launch. And she's off. Beautiful. Leaving some radiation behind. Now, let's check out the star map. It's going to take seven cycles to get there, which is going to take some time. So, uh, from here on out, for the next probably, I don't know, ten minutes, however long it takes to do seven cycles, um... I'm just going to do kind of a base review, so you, I'll put a timing point in the description if you want to skip ahead, and there'll be chapters if you just want to skip to the very end. But we're going to do a bit of base review here. Because we built a lot. Uh, this uh, playthrough is 158 hours long. Uh, almost all of that was actually active play. Probably about, I don't know, three or four of it was uh, me away from the keyboard just letting dupes build and stuff. So starting with the home planet, uh, we'll zoom out here, Alt-S for screenshot mode. Originally we had some uh, smaller rockets, we had the uh, carbon dioxide rocket, and then I built some petroleum, petroleum ones over here, but then I switched over to nuclear. Did a lot of solar. Uh, we mi uh, ma uh, like mined out pretty much the whole asteroid, except for in this section down here. What other projects did we do? Uh, we had 100 dupes, like I said. I don't recommend it, because it... It uh, makes a ton of lag. My frame rate at uh, medium speed was about between 10 and 15, depending on what I was doing. It's still about that at 58 dupes, so I recommend about 15, 20 dupes if you want to have a smoother playthrough. Unless you've got a super computer. I've got a pretty fast computer. It's about a year old now, but it's pretty high end and it still struggles. So let's check out some of the overlays here when, in, when we're zoomed out. Just to see some things here, we've got we've got uh, oxygen. Now these uh, red areas here, I vacuumed out, or I'm vacuuming out, 
to try to improve uh, frame rates. Blues the oxygen. We've got, uh, this is the wiring diagram. Pretty messy. We've got a couple backbones of the 50 kilowatt heavy watt wire along the sides here. Oh, this was a non-modded playthrough except for um, the fast save mod, which I highly recommend. Um, it'll help a lot with the, as your save all gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It lets you throw away some of the reports, which makes the save faster. Otherwise the save takes like 20, 30 seconds on an SSD drive. So that's the wiring, uh, like I said, two backbones, uh, and then lots of spidering off. We've got the temperature overlay. We've got our steam room over here, a bunch of oil here, a sleet wheat farm over here. And the base is generally green except for this corner because we're dumping a bunch of cold water in here. Up here we got nuclear power, which is nice and hot. Down at the bottom we've got, uh, let me zoom out a little bit more here. At the bottom we got the magma, which I was trying to cool this uh, uh, geothermal system, which I'll show you. That's the uh, materials overlay. The light overlay. This is uh, liquid piping. A lot of piping. A lot of lag. <laughs> this is gas piping. And this is decor. Nice in the base and pretty crap everywhere else. What's F9? F9 is plants and stuff. F10 is plants. Our rooms. We got a lot of, these are all farms or ranches on the right here. And bedrooms, bathrooms on the left. I'll zoom in in a bit for that. Exosuits, automation. Not much uh, automation on this map. Since we had so many dupes, they do a lot of stuff for us. So in the core, we got our water tank. I chuck all types of water in here, polluted, salt, or fresh. And then they first go through these uh, desalinators. So if it's salt water, it gets turned into fresh or polluted water. And then the polluted water or fresh water goes through the uh, sieves here. Which goes off to uh, various oxygen makers and various plants and stuff. I got some mopping to do here. Let's mop that up. We've got uh, three Rodriguez, uh, which are ba basically oxygen makers. This thing here makes enough oxygen for about 30 dupes each. This is quite a bit of water, but we got a lot of geysers on this map. I think we had like five or six water geysers. And many of them are cold. I can show you those in a bit here, but uh, we've got this. Let's just check on our rocket here first to see how we're going. 6.3 cycles. Okay, so there's a Rodriguez here, uh, there's one over here, and then there's a third one down here. So that's enough oxygen for uh, 90 dupes. And I was able to get away with 100 dupes because I was piping in oxygen from outside the map as well. What else do we got here? We got a pinch pepper nut farm with a de dedicated polluted water vent. Uh, our main source of food is here. Bristle Blossoms, we got one, two, three, four, five Bristle Blossom Farms. Uh, earlier on I did a lot of hatches, but I kind of paired them back a bit. And we also have these guys. Each one of these makes 16,000 calories. And they're all wild, We're not, we didn't tame them because we don't, we don't want to feed them. We just want them to grow up, lay an egg, and kind of perpetuate the species. So a good source of meat here. I also built the sleet wheat farm down here. This took a while to build. Because uh, we went with ice for the tiles and then we used pips to plant sleet wheat. Starting from the top right, working left, and then going to the next row. You can put one every other tile as long as they're five tiles apart vertically. I didn't quite finish it. This little guy's uh, busy in there. We built the Dreco farm for phosphorite, because you need phosphorite for fertilizer. We're using fertilizer for our plants, which gives us um, kind of double the yield, or double the speed. And these guys, the uh, grub grubs, they're also doing the grub grub rub, <laughs> uh, which speeds up the plant as well. What else we got here? We got a little bit of entertainment down here. I didn't go too crazy with entertainment. 
Could have built more, but uh, the morale, their stress was zero pretty much the whole time. Uh, we got a giant exosuit dock at the left, and then off the right we have a smaller one. The map split in half basically, so this section here is for the right, and everything else is for the left. What else do we got here? We got our steam room. This design was heavily inspired by Francis John, another uh, YouTuber who who plays this game to the craziest degree. Basically, anything that generates heat, I stuck in here. It generates steam. The steam goes through steam turbines to give energy. Uh, I stopped refining metal, which is the big source of heat in here. Because we ran out of lime. What else do we got here? We got a little mini slickster farm. Originally I had more slickster farms down below, but I removed them. Uh, we got a puff farm to make slime. Uh, what else do we got here? We got a little paku farm in here. It's not automated or anything. It's just a little column. Pakus. Uh, what else do we got? We got a carbon skimmer here. The base is pretty much sealed and insulated to try to keep that temperature nice and good in here. It's actually too cold right here, but their plants are still growing, so that's, that's good. Get by some save lag here. Uh, let's check out decor in here. It's pretty good. It's around, it's over the maximum where they hang out the most. And then outside the base it's a disaster because of the heavy wire everywhere. What else do we got down below? We got a little mini mushroom farm here just to use up some of the slime. This was a steam turbine, cool steam vent tamer. I kind of retired it though, didn't really need the water. The carbon dioxide vent didn't need that, so I capped it off. Um, we only got one natural gas geyser vent on this whole map, not really being used. This contraption, if you want to hear more about it, was a couple episodes ago, the geothermal. Basically we're using the magma to heat up some steam. And we've got a conveyor belt with some uh, graphite or refined carbon on here. Keeps it nice and warm. Also got the aqua tuner cooling down the steam turbines and our coolant is nuclear waste. I don't think this is fully working anymore though because the nuclear waste now leaks out occasionally and it's ending up here. So our cooling loop is actually slowly losing cooling power. You'll have to re-put re, re -put the cooling coolant in. I kind of vacuumed out the whole oil area and moved all the oil out. I left one, one natural slickster. <laughs> the last wild slickster and a couple um, sporkins which give off nasty zombie spores. Let me check that rocket again here. How are we? 5.4 cycles to the end of the game. Um, the, the one thing I did since the last episode was made a settlement here. There's one dupe here that I brought into the portal. Originally there was two. I landed them with trailblazer modules and built built a rocket pad. The latter was already here because the little robots built it. Landed the rocket and then built some basic infrastructure. Put a bedroom in. Bedroom, great hall. Oh, my bathroom got destroyed. I forgot to put this wall back in. Guess I'll probably do that. Uh, and then the rest of this asteroid is water. <laughs> which we never used. Uh, there's like a little town down here, or not town, but room. And you also got uh, graphite in here, which I don't really know what you use it for, but has some interesting properties. Thermal conductivity eight, it's pretty amazing. But I uh, didn't really use that. I didn't, I sent some robots to the gassy moo planet, but I didn't really do anything with it. So there's these these guys. These guys probably cause a lot of lag, so in the future I might not go to this planet unless I really want these guys. Um Char Char Ol Aura we didn't go to. A little hidden room down here. We actually had Danny here, poor Danny crash landed on her way back to uh the main planet. Ran out of uh food. I, that was my fault. <laughs> Rocky Ol, I don't even know how to land here because there's no like 
three tiles in a row that we could land on. Oh, now there is. There wasn't when I looked earlier, I don't think. So I don't really know what's underneath there. Grassado. This was the planet with the experiment 52B. We got some resin off this thing, but I never really turned it into iso resin because I didn't really need it. Didn't I uh, didn't make um, super cool on this playthrough either. Didn't really need it. Uh, this was mainly a mushroom farm, and there was quite a bit of slime on this map, plus some puffs, but we had about four or five dupes here. I had a cooling loop, keeping everything nice and cool. But uh, kind of a disorganized mess. <laughs> uh, frozen plant you've seen already. They were living off mush bars here, not very nice. And I used a nuclear reactor to... Uh, melt. Mo this whole asteroid was frozen to start with. It was minus 100 degrees at the bottom. Now it's 76 degrees and the steam is bloody hot. So this thing, after about, I don't know, 100 cycles, kind of melted most of the biome. And occasionally we'll get steam power out of this thing. My main power source was petroleum, which I brought in through the uh, railgun system. And we got lots of petroleum here. This planet was not really well developed. We got, um... Oh, I lost my bathroom bonus a long time ago when I opened this up. Oops. I was stressing them out a little bit. Uh, what else do we got here? Not much. Um, the trick with this map was getting a tepidizer in to melt the initial bit of ice because there's no liquid water when you start here. Got some sail like that. Yeah, no liquid water, so you can use automation to flip this thing back on and forth, back and forth, melting some ice uh, shift plates to get your little bit of starting water, and then it's easy just to keep adding ice until you can warm things up enough to to uh, heat up the base and get some things going. The one thing about the DLC is there's all these asteroids and all this infrastructure. It's like starting a brand new playthrough almost every time you settle a new asteroid. So, yeah, like I said, 158 hours, I can't believe how long it is. 44 episodes, I think. Pretty fun. Uh, but I need a break from this game now, and like I said, I'll, I probably won't do 100 dupes ever again. I did 100 dupes on the um, main game, and now I've done it on the DLC. It was fun, but, uh, but I don't recommend it. Let's check that rocket one more time here. How are we doing? 4.5 cycles. We'll try to go triple speed here. I don't think it'll help much. I wonder if you can fire this thing again. What do we got on the printer here? Oh, shovel eggs. These are actually a pretty amazing source of food because once they hatch, if you kill them, you get, like I said, 16,000 calories each. What the heck? Oh! Meteor showers continue! Or is that because I clicked this thing? Maybe it turns this planet into like a super crazy active meteor shower planet. Hmm. I think it might. That's interesting. Wow. Okay. Good to know. So basically this planet becomes very nasty. <laughs> very nasty indeed. Uh, it'll take a while to dig the dupes out of here and land a rocket to get them to escape out of here. But we're escaping through the temporal tear, so it's probably not a big deal. Uh, we, Our source of petroleum is pretty much hooped now, though. Because we can't easily ship things in without going and digging ourselves out. We do have the portal. Uh, we could make, yeah, steam power. Yeah, this asteroid's pretty much uh, now isolated, unless we're brave enough to go up here and start digging out. Anyway, we're not going to because the series is ending at the end of this episode, so not an issue. We've been over there. What else can we talk about here in the last couple of cycles? What else did I do? Um, talked about that. Did that, um... I'll show you the geysers I got. So we got... 
This was actually a cold starting planet. So that makes it a lot easier to do the playthrough. It's much easier to deal with cold than a hot planet. So it was easy in that respect. We had a cool salt uh, slush geyser here. About 5 kilograms per second. At minus 10 degrees. Then up here we've got... We got a cool slush geyser, same kind of output, roughly, minus 10 degrees. And we've got another cool salt slush geyser here. This one's a little bit more, 7.4k. So that's three. Three cold geysers. Uh, are there any, any others that I'm missing? That one, one. Two, three. That's kind of the main source of water. Then, like I said, we had a few hot geysers. Not as much output from these. Well, actually, five, five, five kilograms out of this one, too, but... And then another hot uh, steam... Oh, I forgot about this one. So, four cool geysers. This one's about the same. This map's absolutely huge, by the way. This is the big asteroid. Another cool steam vent here. And then we've got a cool slush guy, or not a cool, a regular polluted water vent here. 30 degrees, but 10 kilograms per second. This thing really puts out. Originally I was using this for um, making a ton of thimble reed. I made like 3000 thimble reed or something. And then some other miscellaneous geysers, but not uh, water based. And then the other source of water I was shipping in water from Herbera, which had one saltwater geyser, which has 28, almost 29 kilograms per second at 95 degrees. And it's okay that it's hot because we're making hot oxygen with it. And I should let you know how I make a cool oxygen jump, but just before we leave this uh, asteroid, we also have another cool slush geyser, which I never ended up using. And I think that's it for water on this planet. Don't know why I'm doing digging now that we're done. <laughs> but, uh. Check our thing here. 3.4, the big countdown. Hopefully, the game doesn't crash. When, I've heard in the forum that some people who go through the temporal tear, the game crashes instead of ends. And we never did use this brain thing. Let's get uh, Andy, the artist, on this thing. The other thing I didn't do is uh, use an artifact collector to get all these artifacts. I'll probably do that on my next playthrough. Oh, that's the sound of someone's brain being expanded. Let's uh, complete the neural process. What do you get? Uh, deep diver's lungs. Nice. Cuts their air consumption or oxygen consumption in half. And there is a way to recharge these. Uh, I don't know where these come from anymore, though, to be honest. Oh, we've got two native wild mushrooms left on the map. <laughs> Growing peacefully. There's a few wild critters as well, I think, if I left some. Yeah, this guy. He's a wild grub grub, just hanging out. We've got 1.2 million lumber, and I'm burning lumber once in a while to feed these guys CO2 with some automation. So if the, uh, if CO2, so what, what do I have here? If, uh, you know, why do I have a CO2 detector? I don't know. This is unnecessary now. But if uh, the pressure falls below 1500 grams, then these kick on, burn some wood. I could automate the feeding of the wood, I guess, too. But there's a little glitch with that where the uh, this gets filled with like a few milligrams of wood and then it stops working. So we just get the dupes to feed the wood in. Uh, I don't want to explain my steam room anymore. Probably not. We do all the kiln stuff in here, which generates a lot of heat. All my smart batteries are in here. 
The reason I have so many batteries, which aren't that many, is for um, keeping the solar charged up overnight. And then also we've got uh, these two desalinators are desalinating water from the other planet that's coming in in this teleporter. I've got a lot of water all over the place. I'm not. I think s sometimes they're moving ice around and they drop the ice. We'll get this mopped up. Lickety split. A lot of mopping. Okay, I don't think we're going much faster on triple speed than double speed because of the lag. So we'll scale it back to two. Two arrows. I got some lumber here as well. Let's uh, clean that up. <laughs> Let's do some sweeps. Base is a little bit littered. Sweep up this stuff. Oh, there's a few other things I can explain. I got my infinite storage in the middle here. Basically, we dumped stuff in with the automatic dispensers. They're set to sweep only. If you don't set sweep only, they'll grab stuff from the bottom and put it in here and grab stuff in the infinite loop, which is bad. We also have the uh, deep freeze here. All our food is in here. We've got, we're up to 4 million calories. Uh, these are all in deep freeze. I think you need to be below... I, I don't know the exact temperature, but I'm keeping it at around minus 35. Uh, they're also in CO2. You don't want to go too cold or the CO2 gas will turn into a liquid. So minus 35 is kind of the sweet spot. And we're cooling those with these two thermoregulators in a hydrogen loop. So it's insulated everywhere except for the little bit here, radiant steel pipe. And there's some... This is actually Francis John's design as well. Uh, this auto sweeper can reach inside here. And this uh, conveyor loader is dumping all the food and ingredients in here. And then when they need to cook, this auto sweeper can reach through the corner and grab it, but the dupes can't reach in here, as far as I know. So you need kind of a fridge here to temporarily bring things out. It can reach in, grab the ingredients, and load this uh, grill. Not this one, though. And then it can reach this as well, and the micro pusher as well. Actually, this one can. So this can grab out of this... Actually, this is probably not working correctly. They've been able to cook this stuff, so maybe it is... Uh, it must be working, because we've got tons of stuff buried. Oh, we can catch it loading some stuff here. I think maybe this one is able to sneak in here through the corner. Because we definitely have stuff buried. We've got uh, 1.7 million calories of stuff buried. So that's the deep freeze. Uh, little massage clinic up here. I'm wrenching one set of sweetles. Some of our hatches escaped. <laughs> And we were shipping all the uh, all the meat off from the hatch rooms. Oh, so we're sending eggs into this um, evolution chamber, where they'll hatch and then expire, turn into meat, and then we uh, turn the meat into barbecue. How are we doing here? We're close. Two cycles to go. Okay, I'll go back to full speed. Hopefully, it helps. Don't forget to make a suit repair, uh, which you do here, Exo Suit Forge. At one point in the playthrough, I ran out of Thimble Reed, and I had a pile of worn out suits right here by the door, and they couldn't get out anymore. <laughs> it was terrible. So make sure you have lots of Thimble Reed, and set, set your uh, Atmos Suit Worn to automatically get repaired. Scalding. Oh, Dennis, what are you doing in there? Guess he needed to grab that one little piece of food. 
Actually, oh, this is bad. The steam is up here. The steam has never reached up here before. Hmm. This reactor might explode. <laughs> uh, that's not good. I think we better uh, make some... Let's make some... Uh... Let's seal this up here. Hopefully the dupes won't get scalded. Yeah, they'll be fine to build that. Might need a way down here, though. This lead barrier here keeps the uh, radiation from getting out. Or most of it. Oh, it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot. Too hot. <laughs> This is conducting all the heat as well. I think we probably need a some insulated tile here. Whoa, it got really hot. This thing is not hot enough? I guess not. Hmm. We've got a ton of nuclear waste down here. Not great. But it's getting cooking in here. As, as it happens with a nuclear reactor, not surprising. I'm going to move the uh, enriched uranium over to here, where they can't reach it. We'll uh, forbid them from going in here. We'll sweep up all this enriched uranium. That way we won't put any more in the reactor and we'll let the reactor just kind of cool down. It'll take a while though. It's got a lot of fuel in there. So they probably can't reach over there, so we'll have to come down the other side. And I think I'll get a... I think I'll move my fire pole here. Let's move this tile over one. Open this up. Oh, what am I storing in here? Bleach stone. This is no longer in a liquid. So we probably want to move that bleach stone underwater somewhere. Maybe... I'll move it here. It's under pressure right now, so it's not a big problem. Yeah, we definitely don't want the dupes going in here anymore. We got all the rads we needed. How are we doing? 1.3 cycles! I thought this episode would be like 20 minutes, but uh, it takes a while to fly there. Once this is sealed up, it should be golden. It might... No, oh, they can reach that tile. That's good. Let's see how much more meteor damage we got. Oh, yeah, it's piling up. This base is getting buried. Brutal. Brutal. <laughs> it's a little bit tricky with this thing as well, because, uh... You need it to, you need it to be exposed to the. Uh, I guess you could seal it in until the very last minute, but I was getting a message, no line of sight, before I was feeding rads in. I don't know if you can feed rads in uh, with it not having line of sight or not. I never, I never really tested that. What do we got here? Algae or rust? Let's grab some algae. And okay, let's sweep up this rich uranium pronto. I built bunker tiles here because I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. I thought this thing might explode after, but that's not what happened. The oxygen is looking really thin in here. Let's, uh... Do we have any algae left? 18 tons. Algae wasn't really our main source of oxygen in here, but... It's been working. Hello. Let's up this a bit. Our main source of oxygen was this one electrolyzer here, but because we are not melting ice at the moment, we ran out of water. But we should have lots of water down here. Actually, this is running low as well. I moved my petroleum generators down. Originally, they were up at the top, causing problems. But let's uh, let's make some ice here. 
Priority 9. This is how I've been making oxygen mostly. Oh, it's not low enough. Try that again. Lower down. Ice touching the water. Then the tepidizer will warm it up. Got some automation on here. If the temperature is below 25, we kick it on. And once the water level gets to here, and the pressure is over one on the second tile here, we start pumping it out. And it goes through a complete spider web of, <laughs> of pipes. It's a total mess. But it works. Uh, it's kind of cramped for space here. Okay, we should be really close now. We are 0.8 cycles away. Research reactor. Oh yeah, I was gonna put some... Uh, let's replace this with a ladder. And then we can... We can insulate this whole row here. I think uh, by the time this is done, though, the game will be over. I'm going to do one unrelated episode about the new Rad Worlds update that came out a couple days ago. Basically, there's some new starting biomes. That's some new harder planets if you want them. And they also added the uh, this new building here, the uh, manual Rad Bolt generator. And the... Radiation lamp. Two new buildings. Let's go back to our main planet here. Just before the ending. We can do a match a massive uh, final hatch again. Laser fest. Put the hatches out of their misery. We've been eating rocks so long. We don't need the calories, that's for sure. Hatch again. How to pass the time in oxygen not included. It's gonna take a while. Okay, how are we doing that? <laughs> Point four cycles. Can I zoom out here? Uh, I actually didn't explore the whole map. I missed this little corner here. There were some pretty cool asteroids out here. I didn't I only drilled one asteroid in the whole playthrough. Next time I do a playthrough I'll uh, explore these a bit more. You can get uh, uranium from these asteroids with some other cool stuff. The glimmering asteroid field. We got tungsten. What do we got down here? Frozen. That's not so exciting. An oily asteroid. Methane. And the radioactive asteroid. Radioactive gas cloud. Salty asteroid. Oxygen rich asteroid. Quite a few things here. Rocky, not so f exciting. Sandy, organic. 2.2 cycles. We're, we're close here now. Are they still not done with the hatches? Holy crap. There were so many in there. Can we kill the hatches before we end the game? One left, I think. I think we're gonna be. Oh, that was him. 63 seconds. One minute to go. No, I didn't kill all the hatches because there's more down here. There's enough to perpetuate the species, I think. Yeah, there's this room. 
How many are in here? Six. The last six of their species. Okay, 17 seconds. 15, 14, 13. I'm gonna slow it down here. 159 hours and five seconds to go. What will happen? Will we crash? Please don't crash. Ooh. Flight status. I've never done this before, so I don't actually know what's gonna happen. Flight status. Okay. Temporal tear open. Calling achievement. This isn't new, I don't think. This is an old one. Oh, maybe it is new. Pulling back the veil. That wasn't it. I'm not sure which achievement we just got. But I don't think they went in. Temporal tear open. Oh, enter tear. Here we go. Glad I found that. Should we abandon ship? <laughs> no. Okay, here we go, folks. Uh, hopefully the game doesn't crash. Let's see. Oh, oh. Looks like they broke up. Imperative achieved the great escape. Okay, here we go. Cool, cool. Big happy ending. No one's left on that planet. <laughs> oh, they're all cheering. I love it. It's like the end of The uh, Return of the Jedi. Oh, that special music. Oh, there they go. <laughs> Same animation as the end of the main game, I think. Okay, we have always viewed the temporal terror as a phenomenon to fear, but like the civiliz civilizations before us, the call to adventure asks us to confront our anxiety and leap into the unknown. As a radical action of hope, I have sent enough duplicates to the temporal terror to start another colony, explore dimensions beyond our ours, and plant the seeds of life throughout time and space. Cool. Yes, there'll be another colony for sure. I recently hit 3,000 hours in the game. I think I'm at 3,030 hours. Alright, uh, because I love this game. Okay. That's it. It took us to the achievement screen. I think this is the one we were on before. We're done. It sent us back here for some reason. Oh, he's still cheering. <laughs> well that's it folks uh, the pause sound ended I don't know why I guess it's it's done we're done uh, I want to thank all uh, my Patreon supporters for uh, supporting uh, the channel uh, we've got uh, all these named dupes are our Patreon supporters there's a lot of them Except for the ones near the end, we've got uh, Kendera, Chloe, Andy, Juliet, Brian, Potato Patty, Jerion, Kate, Halea, Hale Jamin, Silver Scree, Matthias, uh, Trail, Beth, Robert, Linus, and Mish Mi Mista, Mista, Sean, and uh, Joshua, Chris V, Mokun. Mokun wanted to go uh, to the Temporal Terra, but I'm sorry, Mokun. Uh, we already had some astronauts. Um, got John, Draven, Brian, John O. John, Johnny No Number. Uh, that's a typo. Uh, ben, just in case. Marie, Mumzar. Mumzar has been around quite a while. John N, Jesslyn. Jesslyn's been around for a while too. Uh, Stinky is not a Patreon. <laughs> Sporty. Uh, Bramble Seed, Fraser. May, uh, May is not. Uh, I think the rest are oh Matt, uh, the rest are just regular old dupes except for maybe Jacob and Maddie here. Oh, and then Danny and Danny 2.0. Oh, we got more. Gina, Christina, uh, Clicks, Renee, 
Dennis, and I think that's it. So it's been a blast. Uh, I love this game. I've been playing this game so long now. But time for a break. We're going to be playing some other games like... Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Timberborn. And a few other small indie, indie games. And The Long Dark, Episode 4. But I hope you enjoyed this one. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button if you enjoy this one. The final episode. As always, thanks for watching. And we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.